have learned a lot of Japanese, or should I say Nihongo, from playing Nippon games, especially the Yakuza games, which I have now spent something close to 500 hours in across five completed entries in this most unique saga. By the way, is it Yakuza or is it Yakuza? If we ask Oromi, she says it like most foreign speakers would say it, so I might go back to enunciating the full coo sound. The word of the day this time around is kawami, translating roughly to extreme. It sounds pretty damn cool and it fits the nature of this entry, if not the series as a whole, quite well. Yakuza Kiwami 1 is not the best game in the series, but I would argue that it is among the best and most faithful remakes ever made across all video games. One that was completely justified given how much the series had grown and matured, even if it mostly stayed the same in ways that count. By the time I got around to playing Kiwami 1, I have done enough in these games to consider myself a Yakuza regular, if not a veteran. I've gone all over the place from Judgment to Yakuza 7, eventually retracing the steps through Zero and the Kiwami remakes, getting 100% completion and Platinum in all of them. Minus 7 because that Platinum was thankfully a relatively chill experience, besides the Millennium Tower and the grind to 99. I've gotten so good at Platinum in Yakuza games, which are notoriously grindy and tricky to complete, that I can best describe the measurable success of my time spent with these games in terms of how easy I can complete Mahjong. Being able to cross out the Mahjong checklist in under 2-3 to three hours is a breeze compared to how difficult this silly Chinese domino gambling game was for me to begin with. I used to dread doing the 100% completion for RGG games because of how daunting and foreign tasks like Mahjong were to me and how cruel the RNG can be with these mini games. But now I'm okay with doing them and practice is made perfect because I've done three Yakuza Platinums from scratch inside of about a month and a half. I know I should definitely get my ass out of Kamurocho and touch grass for real, but I felt the need to keep playing them not only for research purposes, but because Sony threatened to take them off the subscription service just as I had paid to upgrade the fucking thing, just so I could finish Yakuza 0, the game I had already started, which was free on the lower tier to begin with. You know, Baka Mitai, am I right? The question that we all ask ourselves as trophy hunters and OCD completionists goes something like, why do I like to cause myself pain? And why is it worth it? The answer is probably that we're stupid with nothing better to do. But somewhere in between those two truths is the realization that I really like these games, these distinct worlds they've created, and I want to see not only what happens to the main characters that I've grown attached to, but I enjoy examining even the small details dropped into the world design and the sub-stories because they add to the atmosphere and the immersion, which is what I'm looking for in games nowadays. One great example of attention to detail that RGG pays in Kiwami is, spoiler, the death of one of Kiryu's closest allies in the middle of Kiwami, someone who was actually introduced via retcon into a Yakuza 0 substory. I didn't even realize that it was Shinji, that dumb misguided kid who Kiryu saved from a life of crime only to see him follow him into the underworld like a lost puppy, the same way that Kiryu follows his father figure Kazuma into the deep. Knowing this detail actually makes Shinji's death all the more saddening because of this context, and it also gives more weight to the observation that Kiryu, like many heroic protagonists, is sometimes the cause of more death and destruction indirectly than he is able to prevent. This piece of poetry would have been lost on me completely if I didn't endeavor to complete Yakuza 0 in its entirety. So now I think I'll certainly always see the sub-stories through. Not that I have any intention of skipping them, because I must get them trophies. After Judgment, I strayed from getting around to Lost Judgment and the like. 
because I didn't want to have to spend weeks at a time with grinding and frustration when I could just as easily knock several Platinums out in the same time span. It's just basic math that can't be argued with. It's why I gave up completely on Diablo 4, or Dumblo 4 as I like to call it now, which has only gotten worse since I left apparently. I even said in that review that I wanted to use the time for grinding and Yakuza instead, and I've kept true to my word. It's true that most of the completion lists in Yakuza games are irrelevant, especially seeing as though most of this shit is just literally copied and pasted from previous games, which makes for an even more redundant use of your time if you've already done these activities before. Looking at you, Haruka. But every game at least adds something new, which is worth your time if you're into unapologetically wacky adventures, which I am. As annoying as something like Haruka's requests can be, they are actually kind of relaxing and wholesome. A gameplay element that gets the narrative point across that Kiryu is actually a nice guy deep down, willing to do whatever he can to help the innocent and make good on his newfound responsibility to protect and raise this little girl. They designed these strategically so you could combine them with the various completion checklist items and cross them off together. I actually think Yakuza 0 is far more difficult of a platinum than Kiwami, but according to Rarity, Kiwami is a bit harder. There are some annoying sections like a certain car chase that returns in a worse way than the one from Zero. But at least this time around, New Game Plus is a real thing, and I can just go through Legend with Tiger Drop and Sumo Slam. Which brings me to one of my contrarian takes, which is that I think Kiwami 1 might be the best of the Kiwami remakes because it retains much of the combat mechanics from Zero's engine and everything feels more responsive. Like all of these games, the combat doesn't feel great until you start unlocking all the moves, by which you've probably already done the main game to the point where having all of the OP stuff no longer factors in until you get to Legend. What matters most is that once I did get all the abilities, I felt like Kiryu was fun enough to play that I didn't mind all the random pop-up encounters, which feel less frequent than the ones from Yakuza 0, except for that shit called Majima Everywhere. This is one of the more relaxing side activities I think a game can offer, taking advantage of that charmer molded from Zero and making him into the perfect foil, the clown to Kiryu's straight man. It gives you everything. A surprise break from the norm, a challenging encounter, and a weird bit of unexpected comedy. It expands upon the complex characterization of the Majima we fell in love with from Zero, as Majima switches from psychopath to friendly joker in a blink of his remaining eye. But how much of a switch is it really when those personalities are one and the same? They set this up perfectly, cheating you by giving you all of Kiryu's dragon upgrades during the prologue, only to throw you back into the streets, ten years older, frail, and weak against the powerful Majima. Majima makes the world brighter as the happy-go-lucky lunatic, lovable as a gleeful pest. In the end, all Majima needs is a friend, if only he knew how much he means to his audience. Another character from Zero who develops quite a bit in the short time is Nishiki and his disappointing fall from grace. He went from being Kiryu's ride or die to a scheming brat that destroys everything he touches. Nishiki is compelling here, especially with the new added scenes that flesh out his path to the dark side, in addition to his backstory provided in Zero, but I felt that he was somewhat underutilized and deserved a bit more attention than he ultimately receives. I felt that even though some of the supporting heroes and villains, like Lao Ka Long, were interesting, Nishiki should have had that theme music instead for his final battle. I suppose the real strength of Nishka's character is how he adds to the legend of Dojima by helping to show through contrast how much of a light Kiryu is against the shadow of Nishki's former self. Nishki was one of my favorite characters in Yakuza 0, and he's someone I pity in Yakuza 1. The starkness of Nishkiyama taking the ruthless initiative that Kiryu wouldn't, because it was against Kiryu's code, is a pretty good storyline to set up the series and its protagonist. Nishiki on his own is quite pathetic, as we see throughout the flashbacks. The man who once saved Kiryu couldn't save himself, or get out of his own selfish ways to save the rest of his friends. Nishiki stares at his hand, realizing he has power beyond his uselessness. Kiryu isn't as ambitious as Nishiki, 
willing to settle as a lieutenant advisor to the family in order to spare some civilian lives from the crossfire. Labeled as a man who punches first and asks questions later, Kiryu doesn't think twice, and maybe not at all, about jeopardizing his own future in order to be the shield of a friend and his sister. By the way, is it just me or is the Japan parole system way too lenient? Only 10 years in prison for killing no less than the boss of the Yakuza? Speaking of the boss, Kazuma finally gets to have some great scenes here as an absolute savage and a bit of a tragic character with a reveal about the history behind the orphanage being truly poetic. Some would argue that this makes Kazuma the true villain of the franchise because he was unable to offer real guidance to those orphans that he made himself, such as the parallel between the info broker and his son and the Yakuza leader and his daughter. Kazuma can't take any more credit for raising his boys than the Yakuza can for his girl or the intel broker his boy. It all makes for a strong story that sets the stage for even better chapters down in the series. I've never played the original Yakuza, but Kawami pays a lot of homage to the original, even doing some scenes almost verbatim in a way that does justice to the game that was very bold and original for its time while expanding upon those systems in ways that align with the new standard set by Zero. Zero is of course a better game, not least because there is more freedom in designing a prequel than there is with remaking a game that had a solid blueprint. Kuwami 1 reminds me a lot of the Mafia remake, shining light on a game series that is lesser known but satisfying to most all that got to play it from the beginning. Kiwami's completion runs at about 80 hours if you're experienced enough, and I'd say the hard work pays off, like the way that the girls at the club reward you for all those visits. In my time so far with Yakuza, I've realized that Kiryu is indeed the chairman and CEO of Yakuza Enterprises and Kiwami 1 and 2 give him more backbone to stand up against the other great characters in the series. Kiwami has some high highs and some occasional lows, but almost everything does, and some would say that's what makes the good parts more extreme. Get. Hey, 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 hey,